A text which is digitally available like we see it on social media or on internet is just a string of characters and does not mean anything to a computer or to a paper it was written on. In that sense, there are no funny or sad or any other kinds of documents for computers except the fact that the devices can store or present them according to a character set. Here, mostly human beings who look at or read them make sense of them. However, this is only true in the basic case and meanwhile, as we all know it for sure, the development in the field of AI is much more advanced. There are indeed many different ways to computationally or algorithmically make sense of text data. In fact, that the text or a language for that matter has some mathematical properties or can be described mathematically was known even before the first computers were invented. And we will begin with looking at what a document term matrix is and how it can be created using the programming language Python. You will find the link to the code below. Hi, my name is Josh Konsiratzade and I am a postdoc researcher at the University of Luxembourg about the topics like AI, deep learning, NLP and supercomputers. Let us start with our first variable which is a list of four strings. Let's imagine them being our documents. It's of course an example invented by me. The first and the third documents are more about animals like dogs, cats and bats. And the second and the fourth documents are more about algorithms and data structures. This list with strings can also come from real documents or be real sentences. It does not matter. It also does not need to be in English. It can be any other language like German, French or Russian. So, how do we convert this information into numbers which could be interpreted? One way of doing it is creating of a so-called document term matrix. The process of creating a document term matrix from documents is also called vectorization. Let me show you first what we want to get before I explain the code which does it for us. From a mathematical point of view, what we see here is called a matrix, but you can imagine it as a table. Every row in a matrix is called a vector. The field dealing with these mathematical structures is called linear algebra. This matrix expresses the relationship between words and the documents they occur in. The words are also sometimes called types of words or terms. So, in our example, we see the columns are the words and the rows represent the documents. The role columns play is also sometimes called dictionary, and you will see soon why. Because all we do is to get the words from all documents and put their count into the corresponding cells in the matrix. In our example, they are lowercase and even alphabetically sorted. For example, we see that the word AND in our example occurs two times in the first document and one time in every other document. The word ALGORITHMS only occurs in the document 2 and 4. So, what does this kind of representation mean? Well, from the computational point of view, what happens here is that we get the same representation length or size for every document, namely the number of words available in all documents. Because every document or every row in our example can be seen as a vector, we call this number dimensions. And if we think about it deeply, when the length and the number of documents will grow, then the number of words so our dictionary or our dimensions will grow as well. From linguistic point of view, the dictionary indeed represents our lexical knowledge or our language ability. With every document or sentence for that matter, we express and use some of it. In some documents we use few words, in others more. However, the most important aspect here is the relationship between documents and words. For example, looking at how the words behave or occur in the documents gives us a clue about their own characteristics. By the way, this matrix can be also looked at in a transposed way, that means rows can be columns and vice versa. Since what we said about documents can also be applied to the words. 
In our example, we see that the words bats, cats and dogs have the same vector, namely 1010. One, because they all occur in the same documents and thus they must have similar meaning or belong to a similar semantic field. And if we look closer, we see that the first and the third document have similar vectors and the same is true for the second and fourth document. The reason for that is the fact that they share many words. So let's rephrase. By creating vectors for words from their behavior in documents, we can cluster them together or find out similar behaving words. And the same applies for the documents. By creating vectors for the words they contain, we can distinguish which ones are closer to each other. Let's dive in into more mathematics. As I mentioned before, vectors together with scalars, matrices and tensors are the topic of linear algebra. They are used across many fields in science. They can explain numerically and graphically, which I will show later in this video. Because vectors are, in fact, mathematical objects in high dimensional space, what we have seen is also called vector space model. And the operations from linear algebra can also be applied to document term metrics. Here, some new terminology. Imagine what would happen when the number and the size of documents grow. Many of our documents will then have lots of zeros in their vector. In fact, a language can have up to a million words. And the number of text documents can also be very high these days. So we get a very huge matrix with little information. This is called sparse matrix. I know, it's sometimes confusing because sparse means less but our matrix is huge. However, sparse here refers to the information in the matrix and to the fact that it is sparsely placed. So what we do most to the sparse matrices is that we make it smaller. Compress it if you want, while it contains the same amount of information. This is called dimensionality reduction. Because, if you remember from the beginning of the video, we call the length of vector its dimensions. After we apply dimensionality reduction, the resulting matrix is called dense matrix, in contrast to the larger, sparse matrix we started with. By the way, the dimensionality reduction can be done for columns and for the rows. One way of doing dimensionality reduction is called singular value decomposition, also called SVD. In scikit-learn, the function which does it is called truncated SVD and as an argument it takes the number you want to reduce your dimensions. How exactly SVD works mathematically I will explain in the next video. Now, I want you to look at our document term matrix and take your time and think about what it would mean to reduce the number of columns or rows. So, if we reduce the number of documents, similar documents will then merge. This means that in the dimensionality reduced rows from our documents, each remaining one is a representation for many documents. By doing this, we kind of capture the quintessence of documents. We can even go further and look at the most represented words in one of these merged documents. This kind of representation we also call topics. If you want to know more about topic modeling, watch my video about it. Basically, in the vector space model based on document term matrix, every word is present in every topic. However, we can sort the words by their presence in the topics. Please pay attention here that this representation in our example are absolute numbers and not probabilities. But the whole topic extraction can also be modeled probabilistically. So, let us look at sorted terms in our topics. We see clearly that the most represented words for the first topic are and, the, dogs, bats and cats. The first two are there because they are present in every document. But the rest makes absolutely sense and shows that this topic is mostly about animals. The second topic is even more straightforward. The terms like structure, data and algorithm dominate. 
That means documents where these words are present are more likely to be from the topic of computer science. By the way, there are many ways of dealing with the function words which are present in all documents. We populated our matrix with absolute counts of words. This is usually called count vectorizer, which is also the case for the scikit-learn library we use. But one can use tf-idfs, which I will explain in my next video. Another way is the so-called stop word removal, where one just deletes all the stop words from the text. So, for the end, I want to mention that the handy word embeddings everyone in deep learning community, including me, is using these days also leverages the same idea. What word to vec algorithm does is to create dense vectors for words from their context or from the so-called window. Inside of SIBO architecture of word to vec algorithm, SIBO stands for Continuous Bag of Words, it is five words to the left and five words to the right of the words, but you can also change this number. This is why word embeddings can capture semantic related words very nicely and it works like vector space model. Interesting is also how in word to vec the vectors are created, but this should be also a topic for another video. So, how do you like this video? Did I miss some aspects? For what topics would you like me to speak on? Please feel free to comment and I'll catch up with you guys in the next video. Thank you and bye bye.